Hey everyone, this is Mike Campbell again. Um, I'm here with Group 1. This week we had Music, Technology, and Innovations. And uh, the topic that I chose was uh, the, evolu the creation and history of iTunes. So let's get started. Um, in the early 2000s, the world of music was on the brink of a revolution uh, with digital music. Digital music was a way for people to able be able to listen to music without having to play it on a record player, a boombox, jukebox, or CD player. It would make things a lot more efficient and it was a way for people to be able to have tons of music without all the unnecess unnecessary accessories. Um, originally getting the idea from the rise and fall of Napster, which was a online way of being able to download music for free, but um, Metallica got upset when they knew, found out one of their songs they hadn't released yet was on Napster, and they got sued for a lot of money. Uh, but uh, anyways, Steve Jobs took the idea of Napster, and he knew that if uh, he knew that Apple needed to act really quick and make come out with something world changing, uh, cause it was right there. And so he met up with the owners of Sound Jam, which was a digital encoding program app. That was that was really close to Apple's QuickTime player, and uh, he actually bought the rights for an undisclosed amount that we never found out about. And this is when he uh, they used a lot of Sound Jam, and this one they came out with iTunes One. Uh, so iTunes One was released on January 9, two thousand one, and it was a free download software for all new Mac computers, and which people could download and store days worth of music all onto the computer. The first week it was released, there was over 275,000 downloads. Uh, this was just the first of many versions of iTunes, and definitely the spark of something huge. Um, this is just a picture of the first iTunes. Um, I'm sure everyone has it now. It looks very basic, and you only have like your library. But this was huge for the point in time that we were in. So iTunes 2 came out, and after... A few months and over a million downloads was clear that iTunes was going to be just as successful as everyone anticipated. Uh, so this was the start of a strategy that would redefine what Apple was known for from being just a computer company to a music company as well. Um, iTunes 2 was released when it was upgraded and improved for one reason, the creation of the iPod, which was a digital MP3 player that could store and download days worth of music into a pocket sized device. This is what the original iPod looked like, and along with going hand-in-hand -hand with the iPod, iTunes 2 improved the three most requested features that were lacking from iTunes 1. MP3 CD burning, so you could burn, you could put a blank CD in from your, and you could burn everything from your iTunes onto the CD, um, a 10-band equalizer, and crossfading. Crossfading was just the amount of time in between songs. Um, on iTunes 1, it used to take many seconds until the beginning of the next song. iTunes 2 improved it so that it would just go to the next song immediately. This started a whole new generation, um, and there's been multiple releases of iTunes since iTunes 1. I believe we're on to iTunes 11 now. Um, and now we have the iTunes Store, which allows you to go and buy songs, albums, music, TV, music videos, TV shows, movies, podcasts, anything really. And it's been revolutionary in the fact that it's just changed the way that people obtain and assess, access music. Um, you no longer have to go to the record store and buy a CD just to listen to the one song. You can now go online and buy that one song. Um, it has changed the whole way of obtaining music. And uh, it's something that's not going to slow down anytime soon. And uh, so here's my biography. Sorry it's a little bit long today, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this.